You've uh, heard the news about the weather tonight. Yeah. They've canceled yeah. thousands of airplanes on the East Coast, and the Boston airport is closing down at, I think they said, 8 o'clock. You guys are about to get stocked in. Stocked in for something big. Yeah. Something. Obviously, something is happening. The symbolism of that ship stuck in ice in Antarctica. The um, programming on CNN tonight is March of the Penguins mm -hmm. in Antarctica. The weather forecast for Monday and Tuesday is again referring to stalking in people so that they can't move in or out of where they are. Yeah, they said they're closing the highways over here, too, because last year they had a storm and people were stuck on the highway for about you know, as much as like two days before they they could get, right. you know, get help. So they said they're closing the highways at like this evening so people don't even go on them. Yeah. Yeah, they said on that ship only uh, 22 people were staying on the ship and that was that yeah, two two symbolism. What does that mean? The two two. What is that linked to? I know it's linked to Desmond two two. Well, it's no doubt referring to the preliminary steps towards a major flood, and they've uh, dropped snow, followed by freezing rain, to make it the heaviest snow to shovel, followed by more snow on top of it, and now they're getting ready for a major snowfall, so anything that hasn't been able to be moved is all going to provide water for the minute it starts melting. And will it start melting at a time when it will break wires, hydro, and... Um, people for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. That's, to me, what we're looking for. Yeah. The hint that I got for March the 2nd. Everybody <laughs> stuck one way or another. I mean, here, to operate the furnace is uh, about uh, $15 a day. Usually, you don't get the type of cold weather that uh, lasts a month long, but you could very well get that now. You're in the negative temperatures tonight, right? We are uh, 22 below zero wow. centigrade, <laughs> and it didn't move all day. That's what it was at 7 o'clock this morning, going through overnight, and that's what it is right now. And it didn't change by more than one degree during the day. We have four goats that have died over the last two weeks. Oh, wow. I had to move the goats out of their houses into the chicken coop with the chickens course, goats bang around with each other if they're loose, but I figured that's better that they disagree for a while than to freeze to death outside. Cats, uh, we've lost two or three cats over the last week or so. Wow. Today, I killed two more chickens to feed the cats a little more meat along with their feed so that they build up some resistance to the cold. But with the number of cats we have, you can be sure there's always one or two that are marginal at any time. And when they get hit with uh, three days in a row now, under 20 below, that's a problem.
Jennifer is coming up with my supper. I can hear her coming up the stairs. If you want to call <laughs> me later, you can call me back. Okay. Okay? All right. Had a good dinner? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Nice. Yeah, they, uh... Keeps you alive from one day <laughs> to the next. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> that it does. Yeah. I'm letting my hair hang, Glenn. It's hanging down. Huh. That's yeah. uh, a return journey. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now I have to work out a, a system to open myself up. To uh, open communi- yourself up. Yeah, for communication. Type of communication. Well, that's good. For that, you'll need more cats than your mother will put up. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. Well, well, it's good. It just helped me, um, you know, um, see the bigger picture. I guess it feels like we're uh, entering an important moment in time. I don't know if it's uh, another one of the things they will short circuit along the way, but. Certainly, at this moment in time, with what I know and what we're doing and and the kind of weather we have, it feels like a setup. They're blocking, like, old paths to escape, I guess. Shutting down airports, shutting down highways. Critical period in time, 23rd of February... To the second day of March. Just uh, mark it on your calendars and see if they change anything between now and then. 23rd of February is Terminalia. That's another name for the border, right? Something like that. Yeah, it means the end. Of the the end of the property or the end of a uh, book or the end of the uh, gore. Yeah, I meant to ask you, uh, did you see the, the Rose Bowl Parade? Did the who? Rose Bowl Parade? Rose Bowl Parade. No, I basically even forgot the Rose Bowl because of the weather. I had to take care of the animals in a different manner than usual, which required that I go outside, work for about 10 minutes, run back inside, thaw my fingers, change gloves, wait about another 10 minutes, and then go back out again. What I would normally do in about 40 minutes' time would have to take closer to two hours running in and out. It's uh, three days we are to have temperature in the uh, general area of uh, below 20 centigrade. 15 is below is uh, livable. You can work um, outside, and even though your fingers are cold and your toes are cold, they don't feel frozen. But uh, beyond 15 degrees centigrade, feeling is one of burning sensation you get in your fingers and toes and, and face. Or you have to choose whether you want to have your fingers fall off or run into the house. Gloves seem to be able to deal with it even though they don't like it. Mo 
most of them seem to be able to survive. Beyond 15, the goats are shivering. Mm. And uh, that's the way they've been now for two days, and expect another day like that tomorrow. Then we're supposed to have two days of warm, Saturday and Sunday, where it reaches close to zero, and then a storm begins again on Monday. I don't know how cold it will be, but there's supposed to be a lot of snow. Do the goats, do they try to get cuddled together to try to warm up? As long as they're of the same clan. We have what appears to be three different gene pools here. The brown, the black, and the white. They attack each other rather than uh, choose to keep warm. That's Only the boys don't matter. They don't care. But we now are down to only one boy. Two of them froze a day apart, died uh, about uh, two, three weeks ago or so. Anyway, we're, we're down to five goats. Now, we had 17 at one time last wow. year before we went to Montreal when we came back is when they started dying, which to me suggests that we are being called out on very specific days. And on those days, the system can affect by remote control some kind of activity related to gas. And the possibility is nerve gas would affect animals, and that includes humans, and therefore they don't want us to be affected in a major way until they're ready. So what they do is call us away from the property to attend a meeting at immigration or something like that, where Tom decides that he has to go to the drugstore or has to go <laughs> to the hospital on a certain day. And of course, we suspect that Tom is a T-cell, right? as opposed to a cell that can recreate the whole his is a very task-oriented activity, whether he knows it or not. He's the person whose task it is to involve himself in communications. Did you get sick before or after you uh, went up, left the property? After. Uh, of course. I told you um, about a time, I think it was approximately 2008. I suspected that something was happening underground that affected the water going into the sump pump area, that it was having to eject water from the basement at times that were um, that didn't make sense, it may have been uh, twenty degrees below zero outside, and surplus water was being run into the sump pump area and was being pumped out. To me, it bothered me that this kind of stuff was happening, and when the summer came, I began to dig outside. What I found as I was digging were a couple of uh, yellow bricks, like in the story of the yellow brick road. 
that was on the northeast side of the building because that's where water comes in from the well. As I dug down, the first thing that I noticed uh, while I was digging down in that corner was that there were pipes aimed at the house and at about a depth of uh, four feet or so. I kind of identified three pipes, one of which I knew for certain was water from the well. The other one was a pipe that they used to bring in oxygen into the well so that you don't create a vacuum when you're pumping out. Uh, you bring in air to replace what you're taking out. The, both those pipes, water and air, were normal. But there was a third pipe, one about uh, two inches in diameter, that I disconnected from the house, and there was nothing in it. didn't remark anything, and... And the only thing I could think of is this pipe may be used to bring in some gas at different times into the house. So I dug back towards the middle of the yard, lifting the pipe out to see where it went, but when I got about to the middle of the yard, that was about the end of the time I had for digging, and I had to start refilling. So I left the pipe sticking out of the ground about two, three feet, pointing straight up in the air, so that if there was anything that would come out later, I would see it in the backyard, and then... I had to refill the hole because there was water coming out of the ground at about four feet at that time of the year. So I covered it all up and left it. This year, I've been digging on the southeast corner of the house and came across a similar situation although it's not on the side of the sump pump, uh, there are two pipes that seem to be going into the house at about four feet down. And one of them was a pipe, they normally put a bigger pipe with holes in it that they normally put around a foundation to direct the water that would accumulate on the surface coming down the edges of the house and redirect that to the sump pump. The only problem is it was backwards. Instead of moving water away, the setup meant that it moved water directly to the basement of the house on the opposite side of the sump pump. That, I recall, was where on three or four occasions when hydro failed and water seeped into the basement, it was not only coming out of the sump pump and rising onto the floor, but it was also coming up onto the floor on the opposite side of the house from a drain underneath the basement floor at the bottom of the outside steps and was running into the basement from under the door. Why somebody would have set up a drainage system that aimed the water into the house, I couldn't figure out. So anyways, I cut it off and just raise the end so that uh, 
it wouldn't do it again. Since then, there has been no water running into the sump pump itself. So I don't know if I've stopped it or if it's basically accumulating somewhere else. The other thing I found was another pipe exactly the same as the one on the other side that did nothing. Can't find out yet exactly where it goes to in the house, but somewhere along the back side, and I would have to raise all the patio stones to get at it. So I, again, cut it so that I could lift up at least the part I know of and stick it straight up in the air. Now, I suspect that if either one of them brought in gas, whether some kind of nerve gas or, or propane without smell, it would be to affect either the people in the house or set up a possibility of a fire. This propane is heavier than air, and it would settle on the basement floor. And when a furnace came on, for example, the spark would set it off, and it would explode and burn. That would explain why this house is built the way it is, not a normal house with uh, uh, gibrock plaster. There's none of that in here. It's all wood, and it wouldn't take very much to burn the whole house down once a fire started. So those are two possibilities that I've come across that removes danger, potential danger to the house, but continues it in open air in the back, which may have had an effect on me when they were tied to the house, because I used to live in the basement at one time when I first moved in and had to keep an eye on, on Tom that he wouldn't set the place on fire. That may have caused my original problem, but it would be one way of explaining why when we were called to Montreal and came back in March 2013, that over the next few days, uh, goats died one after the other. I think at that time we went down from uh, 17 goats down to about 10, 9 or 10 goats, including as well over and above that all of the goats, female goats that were pregnant had babies that died at birth. There were about 12 of them died at birth. If there is an automated system underground or linked to a house in the neighborhood, they could be sending some type of gas in that way. And it would explain why animals who are in the yard would receive a shot of that gas. They all had similar reactions to whatever it was that was done, and that was the loss of the ability to use their front legs as support. They were all kind of kneeling forward before they died. So it suggests that linked to the lungs problem would begin in the lungs and the front legs would collapse. 
So that's the kind of stuff that began my search. And when I began to dig on the south side, I came across an impediment as I was going down. And I found, as I kept digging around it to find out its size, that it was about 18 inches across, about 3 inches in thickness, and it was made up of a lot of smaller rocks stuck together that made it appear, from what I understand, is the way meteors are made that they appear to be one large rock traveling, but are really made up of a lot of small rocks stuck together with ice around it. And that's why you can't shoot one down, because instead of getting hit by one big one, you get hit by millions of small ones. The small ones can be the size of a bus. So the odd thing about it is that its shape is very much that of a heart, which links it to February 14th, Valentine's Day. I pulled it out and fed it with the rest of the items that I've found on the farm that suggest some uh, activity is really going on here that is not normal to a farm property. And the suggestion I've made is that this place was visited by the Vikings at a time where Europe's attention was being diverted to the Middle East by the Crusades. And for about a hundred years, the Vikings did something. About the year 1000 to 1100, they were doing something here that uh, involved a plan for the future, which was, in fact, linked the genetic engineering which was going on in uh, many of the ritual bearing communities. Rituals based upon sex are not really based on sex. They are using sex as a cover to what they are actually doing what they're actually doing is genetic engineering and they needed to study every aspect of human life, principally memory. Therefore, would do certain things to people during rituals which would in fact affect their memory in a positive or negative way which they could then study uh, afterwards, especially by people who are involved in lineage of uh, uh, tribes are, in fact, basically following the evolution of a gene pool, each tribe being given slightly different gene pools, genes, so that they will react under similar circumstances in different ways. may, in fact, want to uh, make people better warriors, therefore locate the best warriors you have at the time, and when they're killed, retrieve their genetic material and then use it to engineer future systems 
that are used to reanimate the genetic material of uh, past lives into the future. That is basically the main purpose of the laboratory we currently live in, which is time to have begun at 4000 BC or so and will be completely cleaned away of its signs of having existed by the year 4000, giving about seven or 8,000 year leeway to uh, run this laboratory on genetic engineering. So what did the Vikings do when they came here? What did they bring here has been a question. Is it the material used in genetic engineering, or is it tablets that have instructions on genetic engineering and they're missing some of the information, or is it pressure of some kind to kickstart a new society? I don't know for certain. It may include some of that, but it would not be the most important part. More important would be the information one would obtain that confirms my view that we are living guinea pigs in a laboratory. The entire population of the Earth, the design is such that once a theory becomes a theory rather than just some people's thoughts. And it's by then, as a theory, it's proven, such as is the, the theory of light, the theory of fire, the theory of uh, sound, all of these theories which are considered today proven then they must destroy the experiment and move on to the next. That's simply the destruction of a gene pool, which basically means a population has to be removed. And, of course, that's the purpose of war, pestilence, famine, and disease, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, each one has its ability to destroy a population in a way, for example, that the U.S. went through in the Civil War, that Syria is undergoing a cleansing now of a specific part of its population. Different countries in Africa have had the same thing. And all of that is basically the same story as Noah's Ark, whether you destroy by war or destroy by flood or fire or things falling from the sky, the purpose is basically the destruction of a gene pool. The reasoning behind bringing the Vikings here at the same time as there was a march on Jerusalem, may have some linkage back to the day the treasures disappeared from the temple in Jerusalem when it was destroyed in 70 A.D., the second temple was destroyed in 70 A.D., and the goods were taken off to Rome. Then Rome was destroyed just as Jerusalem was, and obviously the Phoenicians who controlled the Mediterranean at the time would have been involved in moving that to Carthage, which was their headquarters across the Mediterranean from uh, Italy. 
So what happened to the treasure that would have some importance to the reestablishment of a temple in a different place at another period in time, I suggest is the reason for the existence of everything I know about this farm. The site of the temple, which wasn't just a temple, it was a complex of buildings, some related to religion, some related to higher learning, some related to uh, hospices for dying old men, and others related to hospitals for the birth of children and the genetic engineering of those children. All of that fits a pattern that exists here. Over time, the links that I've made has identified a family name that uh, has kind of followed me in much of my life, and it comes from the name Deborah. D E is the first two letters, and those are the same letters used to describe Deutsche German. Bora, B O R A, followed by an H. Now. B-O-R-A is uh, linked closely to, because the letter B, D, P, Q, and sometimes G in a lowercase format look alike, but can be turned around so that the B can become a D or flip so that the letter can become a P or lowercase q. It is by that method that the B can be replaced with a D. And that word would then say rado with the letters scrambled or dora or A-Rod, and if you take one letter away, it could be uh, linked to a Shakespearean play, Ado, A-D-O, much ado about nothing. Now, I just happened uh, at one time in my life to be working at a place called Gestetner in Toronto and was asked to go to Montreal because my request for a transfer was back to Ottawa, but there were no openings, and they asked me if I'd go and do some uh, customer relations and mechanical work on equipment in Montreal. And when I got there, I found out that my boss was Bob Bora. Bora in Germany is an original name that dates back to the Bible times and is said to have been converted at one time to a new name called Mergenthaler. Now, Mergenthaler, taller at the end means a dollar coin, and Mergen is from the word Morgan, which means morning. Morning dollar coin is basically the tip left to a prostitute by a John in the morning. If the services were satisfactory. The price of the visit 
required that they leave a tip on the nightstand beside the bed. Now, by some strange coincidence, Mergenthaler family became associated to the printing world with the invention of portable type that could be assembled to make words and lines, and the system is called typography. Who, in fact, when I was in high school and specializing in printing, had provided me with a, uh, a bursary, the typesetting world that I had specialized in was requiring some kind of activity since the um, group of women provided a bursary so that I could continue my studies in Toronto. At one stage in my life, I ended up opening a branch plant in Ottawa for Mergenthaler linotype. Now, that's quite a coincidence that everything that deals with my journey to the farm is linked to Mergenthaler and Bora and the Radeau, which means raft, and the river that goes by, they call it Rideau, River, and I've concluded that my life has not been my life, that I, in fact, have been genetically engineered, and that the journey I would take was being manipulated at every step of the way so that I would learn different lessons. And uh, once lesson was learned, stopped dead in my tracks and moved to a different direction, which I can basically, after 14 years in Gestetner, fell into kind of a short-term learning session, one after the other, usually lasting four years or less. So now I'm on the farm and I have the background of having looked at the farm. I have the background of being approached by a group of people called the cell, kind of private investigators who seem, uh, by their words and the evidence that I have substantiated, seem to be linked to something beyond this place, beyond this life, to uh, a place they call purgatory, as opposed to a place religion, specifically Roman Catholics, remote control Roman Catholics, would call purgatory. But the task seems to be somewhat similar, and that's to cleanse the dead person of those things which they feel hinder their advancement. Purgatory cleanses policemen, military, civil servants, that type of person of their sensitivity and adds to them what can best be described as fascism, Nazism, makes them not care for the people that they have to 
interview or arrest or beat up in a war, they seem to have lost all, if not most, of their sensitivity. On the other hand, purgatory seems to be a place that says, if you've done something wrong during the <clears throat> lifetime you've had, then here's an opportunity for you to cleanse your program by taking some time to return and help out those people you left behind and make up for some of the damage that you've uh, done while you were there. Some way in the sense that one would describe angels who would come and the difference between an angel comes to increase your sensitivity to the things that you do while archangels made here on earth want to remove any sensitivity you have about the people around you and how they should be dealt with. In that context, the story that is being told to me is that I have, in fact, been born originally in a genetic engineering experiment, which for all intents and purposes, was faulty in its quality control. And instead of getting what they expected, they got someone who would, in fact, be middle ground, if you will, between what they wanted and what they didn't want on both sides of uh, the issue, whether they be wanting to increase the sensitivity or decrease the sensitivity. They got someone down the middle, and although they decided to keep it as a model and test it out in a number of occasions, and I'm told that I've been reanimated 700 times since that first time, each time being placed in circumstances that showed them which side of an issue I would take. Similarly, at the same time, there was another person born attached to me, either as a twin or a sister, who has, in fact, been found to be extremely sensitive, and that that person has been reanimated on a number of occasions what I'm told is 37 times. That ended up being a person who went by the name of Angel Nagel, Jennifer Nagel, who is now my wife since uh, 2010, yet was not allowed to come to Canada until uh, January the 18th, 2013, wasn't allowed to come back to Canada because she had been here before when we got married. That her role is different from mine in that she has no uh, knowledge of um, anything other than her life here and has not been given any knowledge by any individual along the way in a manner that 
in those 37 lives she could remember if prodded or um, think about even as a possibility. However, she was given a talent linked to painting as an artist. And the story that I know of is being produced by her. Even though she doesn't know why she paints certain things, it basically links the evolution of human beings on the planet in a manner in which most people who are not involved in genetic engineering would not understand, overstand, verstand, because it begins by a painting of... um, Something that looks like blood vessels or nerves, which basically I have identified as a portrait of the structure that carries sap within a tree. And then she drew a picture of a tree, which highlights the branches, the trunk, and the roots. Therefore, the first picture basically is pointing the finger at SAP, S-A-P, the life-giving force which in human beings we would call amniotic fluid. And when a tree dies in the winter, coniferous trees, it loses its leaves. And then when things warm up again, sap returns to the tree and gives it life again which is, in fact, the basis of genetic engineering any human life. And a tree is the origin of memory. And coniferous trees date back, as you know, to a period as early as 80 million B.C., which is a long time before dinosaurs. That basic concept of sap being responsible for reanimation, I have found, is also responsible for personality. Depending on the cocktail of sap used in artificial engineering, you can pre-plan a barbarian, you can pre-plan a nun, even though they appear on the surface to be different people at extremes from one to the other. Behind the scene, one might discover in the context of a cloister within a cloister within a cloister in a monastery, that the thought processes of nuns are very similar to the thought processes of barbarians. In the world of barbarians, only they matter not a matter of sensitivity, it's a matter of gimme, 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 rape, pillage, whatever, as long as I and and people around me, if I were a barbarian, would want to live. There comes a time, however, where that must be disguised. 
Jews are the best way to disguise barbarians. They have given themselves a personality dealing with the public which is hypocritically different the way they deal with people when they're not being watched. One of the things that they've done in monasteries is make babies. Making babies in which they could predict their personality traits, a manner which most people would not expect. By that I mean that it's one thing to produce a saint at one end of the line and a Nazi at the other end of the line. It's a different story, however, if you understand coding and phonetics, that they come from the same base. Saint at one end or Nazi spelt N-A-T-S-I such as you get around the Himalayas in countries that have Istan in their name, the normal for people who live in a hypocritic world, doctors being among the worst, take an oath, Hippocratic oath, because they have license to kill. What people don't know is they have also license to make. Therefore, if they came up with the plan for genetic engineering from a start which begins in a vat containing a design amniotic fluid, wrote down how that took place, their helpers got a hold of the archives, basically stole the information, much as they do today around the world, take things that are in the archives that are not in everyday use and lose them. Some way these lost documents find themselves the property of nuns. Then you have a situation where the nuns, unbeknownst to the people, the scientists, the doctors, the priests, whoever gathered up the original information, no longer have, but they can then use it produce those people who will, in fact, provide them with the resources that a cannibal or a barbarian is looking for. Either that's uh, eating human flesh or stealing the means of their survival. Basically, what we're dealing with today is that a number, if not most people on the planet at this time, have been genetically engineered to serve a purpose for this originally background team of people reverse their role serving themselves under the name God, which is dog backwards, and the feminine side of dog is called the bitch. All of this is to tell you that we've reached a point where the real fabricator of the universe we live in is known to us as matter, as in its target time where this place
place we call the universe, this Milky Way area of the universe, and this Earth, which revolves around a sun, has lost its way to a point where it cannot be retrieved. Therefore, matter has decided under its role creation to leave it behind. That we are like the ship today which is mired in Antarctica, ice that prevents movement from one place or another, it has decided to drop in like a helicopter and lift out those people who are not responsible for the problem or who have, in fact, cleansed themselves of the problem, participating in purgatory, and moves them to a different place, which they refer to as a fifth dimension opposed to a four-dimensional universe we live in now. What I believe I have discovered at the base of a rod, Dora, Debra, Dora, using Mergenthaler linotype typefaces of the past deciphered their code which has led me to find what I believe is the rod which they set up to point to where the final instructions are for past, present, and future. That involves the treasure of the temple in Jerusalem, which was the first promised land. I say first because nothing but cosmetic activity ever happens around the number one in the code. Real activity begins with number two. That activity can be declared as the cosmetic comes first, the real activity comes second, the third activity finances the activity. The fourth activity is in charge but hidden in the background. The fifth activity defends it. And the sixth activity is the real ruler of the plan. All of that, which is incomprehensible, I would suggest to most people, the rules for moving a group of people did not cause the problems on this planet and who have either lived, died, or sent to a waiting place, lived, died, and cleansed over a period of time, then sent to the waiting place. And another group of people who are alive today may or may not die, but are being required to lead this group much as a board of directors. I say that because in the plan laid out by the art, of the sap and the tree, one looks at the final product of a tree. Basically, 
starts with the concept that memory lasts forever and grows along the way, ends up with a place where a chair is made. A chair is made because it is the seat of something important. The seat of something important requires a chair man or a chair woman who then has a board of directors. Often there would be a single person with a board of directors that numbers 12 total being 13, they basically manage much as a cabinet manages a government or corporation of any kind. On this planet, we have had people of different colors. But if you take black and white and everything in between and you merge it to the middle, it suggests that the color that comes out at the end is more red than anything else. One considers everyone was black and then they made brown people for India and then yellow people for Asia and a division of yellow would, in fact, be Buddhism, uh, who used the color orange. Something had to be added to the yellow in order to end up with an orange, and I suggest that that would be Persia, building of Persia, which has the P-E-R at the front, suggests red, that uh, the lighter colors are derivative of that. Caucasian, which is kind of pink. So a red chair is the symbol of a person who sits either in a cosmetic way or in a functional way. Cosmetic wouldn't be like the Queen of England or Holland or Sweden or whatever it is today. Real would be like an Obama who is a president of a democracy. Both of them have a role, one more symbolic than the other. Within the context of Deciding who goes where seems to me that where there is a doubt as to which way individuals will go, they have to be brought to a court where they are questioned on their role. However, they don't need to answer the question. They don't need to have witnesses come in and answer the question. Since creation from the beginning of life has included in the makeup of individuals a black box, much like an airplane or a car or a train has a memory of what they did past, this black box does not lie, cannot be changed after the fact. Therefore, will speak on their behalf when asked the three important questions. What did you know? When did you know it? 
what did you do about it? And the answer will be known, and then the door through which the people entered the court will, in fact, be locked, leaving only kind of three choices, that you go join the group that moves on, that you return and work off some of your uh, indiscretions while you were around the first time, or you've been sentenced to not be a problem to any future group. And that sentence may be something like 10 million years, 5 billion years, whatever, all the way to never again, and therefore total decombination. Here I am now at the point where the rod is pointing to the answers that I at least am looking for. I am being prevented by the weather moving forward, and I want to make certain that if what is being prevented is permanent when it comes to me, that you two at least know what was going on before it happens. Anyone you want to share that information with, fine with me. Now, you and anyone else in the future who, in fact, arrives at the gate purgatory, or I shouldn't say purgatory, to the point that decides whether or not you go into purgatory uh, or are sentenced or are sent forward, when you arrive there, you will know that you have arrived. You may have died or not died. But you'll know you've arrived when you arrive at a door, and outside that door, on your side of the door, there will be a red chair. On that chair will be sitting Jennifer. She won't say anything. But record the fact that you have arrived in her black box. You may see me because I'm to escort a specific number of people there, primarily the 13 who will form the board of directors. Now, you may say, how can you prove this? My answer to you is, I have evidence no proof exists for anyone until they arrive there. Therefore, leaving the doubt to each individual to deal with as they choose. But whatever decision they make, before they get there, they will one day see Jennifer sitting at a door in a place they've never seen before. 
whether they got there because they died or were assisted before they died to get there, will be known to them at that time. The question that remains for all of the people, once whatever is found here is found here, if it can, in fact, be extracted while I'm here, it will be made public. If it's being prevented from extracting it, somebody takes it and hides it from the world, then I want you to know what it is that occurred. There are any questions with the information you have to this point that I might be able to answer. Other than the temple complex in Jerusalem, 34 acres. The farm here is 34.2 acres. Are you the life tenant on the D? Converts the races. I beg your pardon? Somebody I was going to ask, ask Glenn, are you the the life tenant on the deed? Is that what you are? Your status on the deed of the property? I am a tenant on a property was legally purchased by two women whose names are on the deed. Letters have been given, for example, to insurance companies saying that I am considered an owner. Yeah. You're allowed to live there and do maintenance and everything like that, but they have the ownership or whatever. A legal piece of paper, uh, but no longer do they have any financial debt because that debt that they put up the funds when it was originally purchased has been repaid to them. Satisfied, yeah. So, yeah, that means that you can't be kicked off the property, though, because you have that. So you're allowed to stay there your entire life. (laughs) Not for any legal reason be kicked off the property. Right. We don't live in a world <laughs> where the people who write laws live by them. You saw what they did to try and keep Jennifer out of here. Oh, yeah. just want you guys to think about all of this for I a see. while. Yeah. How we watch to see if the weather changes make it possible for us to do some work here, or if we continue like the boat in Antarctica, be stuck in ice, passengers remove a helicopter. The the staff of ship are left behind. One way or another, We are the promised land. We are here the place that was intended rather than the one who took it for granted because they were number one. Oh, the root. This thing, uh, I remember going this, looking at this a while ago. This whole cold thing is called uh, a nor'easter. Well, the the destruction is more northwest. Earth is northeast. For our purposes, there is a, a location in the country called the Northwest Angle, which uh, is on the Canadian side of the border, but American property because of the way the boundary was determined by the French. The Treaty of Paris 
basically what set the stage for drawing the boundaries between Canada and the United States. Harris basically suggests Pa, father, or fat, her, pregnant woman. IRS. Money comes in to them through tax collection. Tax collection is you always make a profit. Like the dealer in poker, they get 15% off the top. So there's a mother superior, she has a cabinet. Cabinet of the Mother Superior, like the second planet from the Sun, Venus is linked to the word revenue. Closest planet to the Sun is Mercury, in French, Mercury, Mother Superior. And then we come in third place as the year, Earth, the year. We listen in on the rest of the universe. No one here has all the answers. The answers are in Jennifer and in my deciphering of what she doesn't know how to decipher because it lives in her subconscious and is produced as art. What the system received from creation was basically 19 answers out of 20. Each one good to within 4%. So what that basically relates to is if you're making decisions and you have 19 things that are correct, out of 20, there's a good chance you can move along through guesses. However, if you make one mistake close to the beginning, your angle increases dramatically the further out from the point of beginning. And that's basically what's gone wrong since Enoch on day one was given the information by creation. Missing parts may only be one twentieth, five percent. However, five percent close to a dot, not very much. Five percent, three and a half billion years later, may be more than what can be dealt with. When did That's you think- where we are. When did you think uh, the system learned that they uh, made this mistake? That they uh... Well, they were told when St. Bernard sent a small group of priests, Freemasons, to the Middle East. We know that because that's when genetic engineering became known in the West. The East having built Asia and Persia knew that there was another part they hadn't dealt with and that involved the past and the future. And Africa was the past and Europe or the West was the future. They knew it existed but they hadn't been there. The priests that were called to Jerusalem on the pretext of defending or regaining control of the birthplace of Jesus were in fact brought to be told how one goes about reanimating a dead person. The answer to that was You're not reanimating the person themselves. You're reanimating a 
new person through an egg made by a woman, but you can modify that person with the characteristics of a dead one. If you know the recipe for the type of person you want to make, you choose from the dead ones which ones resemble the ones you want to make. You extract from the egg those things you don't want and insert the things you do want so that you can end up with a person who in its first life used to say no more often than not, now end up with a person who does exactly the same task but says yes. Nothing a slave master wants more than slaves who believe that they're coming up with their own solutions are doing their own thing. And in fact, all they're doing is living out a program. And until they learn they are a program and make a conscious effort to dissect that program and then make the decisions required to escape the program, they are all zombies, walking dead. Learning how to uh, reanimate people like that. Is that what the Knights Templars, when they went to Jerusalem? Uh, um, learned. That's what they learned. They came back and they told the Vatican, which basically is a complex and includes a science lab. They took them to the Lascaux Caves in France, recuperated some coprolite off one of the cave floors, took it back to the Vatican Science Lab, removed the outside layer, if you will, it's not exactly that because it's all mixed together, removed the part that we would call shit, and leaving behind the part that is known as DNA. DNA is another word for soul, personality. Then the DNA was placed in a vat, an amniotic fluid made up, which had been basically made for that time from uh, royals, and was the sap of a fruit tree, most likely an orange, they, in fact, then placed a genetically modified egg within that fluid, and there was born an artificial baby, which, in fact, became the monarchy of Monaco. Those are the ones who... uh... I think like one of the oldest. Yeah. Know? Well, from from that period in time, which was around 1100 A.D. So all the development that ends the period of darkness for Europe and turns to a period of unprecedented development in art and uh, manufacturing and industry and everything begins once they've learned the lesson of genetic engineering. Then they have to be taught the lesson of how much of a person is left to be socially engineered after birth. The evidence that is done with twins. You take two identical twins and you raise one in Russia and the other one in Africa, for example, 
you would end up modifying the existing traits of each individual based upon the environmental changes that occur when a person is raised one type of environment as opposed to another. They come to realize you can make them anything you want. Anything. As long as they have the basic instructions of what you want in the end, how they deal with people is going to be based upon their personality. That part requires six years. You give them six years with their parent. The word is pa rent. All rents out children, you just get to pay for them. As soon as they reach the age of six, you can't be trusted to raise them properly, so they take them out of your hands. You provided them with what they wanted as a family orientation, but when it comes to education, They want it to be standard to the gene pool. Each country, each state, each city can be modified slightly so that the same gene pool handles things differently. That's why New York is different from California. Texas is different from Montana. You code their language and you code their accent and you code their mannerisms so that even if they won't tell you, you, the controller, know where they fit. What gene pool did they come from by whether they use the fork in their right hand or left hand or want chopsticks? What place do they come from if they use the word us as opposed to us? I've noticed little things like that, little nuances. Makes it difficult for spies on the system to get away with spying when, in fact, the minute they pick up their fork, they're detected. They showed that in that film... uh... Inglorious Bastards. Funny how they, they called it Bastards. Mm-hmm. It's inglorious. We are all bastards to some <laughs> extent. Some more than others. We are all Jewish because that's where the uh, work on a mass of people began. When they left Egypt and went into Israel, the name Israel is based upon Sarai, the wife of Abraham, and therefore it suggests that she was there when he was setting up booths in the deserts of Jordan for 40 years, and in fact 40 years was the average lifespan. So 40 years was intended to get rid of the people who knew the women who were taken to Israel once they reached the Red Sea. I don't want to tell you that both the men and the women traveled together, but when they got to the Red Sea, the women turned left and the men turned right. None of it got back together again because that's the lifespan, 40 years. But if you could live beyond 40 years, you'd know Mm -hmm. something about what was going on. So when Moses got to the promised land, God would not let him in. Now, at that time, who were the people that was managing us? I know the computer, two computers managed this on a very large scale, but it seemed like the... uh, Neanderthal was homo erectus, that they, they played a role in, in, in 
guiding these movements. The Neanderthalers can best be described by the name Essene. And they, they use a number of names for them. Ebunite is another one. Poor me is another one they use. In secret, poor me means I'm root. And they came down from the Balkans, and we've discussed before how they met with a certain group of women from Africa who had come from Libya, territory of North Africa. And these were women who could not bear clones of themselves. Didn't quite understand what the problem was, but they were different from the other women, much like nuns are different from the other women. But then... They walked around the Mediterranean to the Black Sea, and the guys, Neanderthalers, came down from the Baltics, and they found that copulation was the answer. You need an egg, and you need some fertilization to occur. You need to use a container that will hold the amniotic fluid. Then once the Neanderthalers got used to understanding that, they then knew that they could artificially change the system where they wouldn't have to use the container called woman, but could use a scientific-type beaker in order to manufacture the amniotic fluid after testing many versions of it and getting the timing down of how long you take to extract the life force out of the frozen, cryogenically frozen species and then use that amniotic fluid to put an egg which they collected by creating religion and sacrifices, rituals, and all of that stuff. When they found out they, uh, they didn't need the women, uh, the container called women, they, this is probably like uh, the point when they, would, I guess, had that disagreement because they just felt like they didn't need them? Is that like... Uh, yeah, they uh, tried to drown them all, Women found out, got out of the way, but then the Neanderthalers started on a chase for them, and Neanderthalers, the women and the Neanderthalers, crossed back uh, across the Middle East going south, but the women turned on the other side of the Mediterranean and went west, while the Neanderthalers went straight through and ended up in places like Somalia and Madagascar. And the women, being afraid that the word would get out they were in Africa, made their way across the ocean to South America, only to discover that both of them ended up at the same place, Antarctica, one coming off the tip of, South America, the other one coming across the Indian Ocean. I mean, we're talking here about there can be thousands of years between each one of these steps. But eventually, they found that they could, in fact, use women to get information that couldn't be had by men from men therefore began to convert woman to a person that would more suit their needs. And what better vehicle to use than nuns? So basically, like, it's almost like, a, in a sense, like a 
they have like a the fight between each other, and they use Homo sapiens as basically tools for their own. Both of them used to, Homo sapiens. Don't as forget, tools. they changed it to from Homo, which when they say Homo ecce, behold the human, to Homo sapien, and later Homo sapien sapien. So that suggests that at one stage of the game, they learned the importance of sap and used it to make changes. But for the end times, the type of sap they were using was not sweet enough. They found that sweet sap they were looking for from fruit trees at the beginning to trees that don't bear fruit called maple. And in Ogdensburg, they put what seems to be a, a fish as the design of their downtown core. But a fish is only a double helix and a half. The half makes it look like a tail on a fish. It seems like they both seem to agree to rule over other people and stay hidden. Because they seem, when you go into different coasts, they're both worshipped by the people there. Yeah. They have different factions, different divisions, and they compete with each other as media, which I refer here simply to the press. But they have other media, police, doctors, lawyers, architects, engineers, every group of people that is allowed by the system to judge their own when they do something wrong rather than send them to court. And then recently they found out that the people who are judging their own are letting them off scot-free. So they're not living up to the standards set out by the original. And therefore, they've had to start arresting priests, nuns, doctors, lawyers, policemen, soldiers. I was just thinking, like, you know, how you have that role where you'll be walking these characters to uh you know, to, to be judged on or on the way out after they're judged. Um you think uh, these other people like uh the Anatolas or Amazonians will be in that uh courtroom? Everybody that's ever lived and died or on the last day and not necessarily died, have to be separated. And when there is a doubt as to a person's real reasons for wanting to move out of this area, no chance can be taken that that person will infect or infest the new universe. <clears throat> Therefore, any time there's a doubt, there has to be someone who says, no, no free pass. And that's basically the red chair at the door of the court. Now, at, at that point, if someone's alive, would they remove the medulla and let them sit there, or are they still going to be having that in their head while they're trying to answer all these questions. It needs to be removed. Or turned off. It just needs to be played. Now, no human being with any program on the earth has all the answers. I have more than most. Jennifer has more than most but can't express them in words 
can express them in paintings. And from what I understand is that the three of us basically represent third African, me, Caucasian, and you, Danny, someplace in the middle. That, the fact that we are three different colors, suggests we're three different pools. And therefore, we have a role to play because what we know, consciously or subconsciously, has to be extracted. I suspect that, Danny, you are somewhat like Jennifer, and you will speak through your music. And the links to Japan are important because Israelis and Japanese got together. The Israeli moves that correspond to each letter the 22 letters they have in the Israeli alphabet are really moves that people make in fighting. And it was that instruction that was given by the Israelis to the Japanese when they devised the samurai movement or any of the martial arts that are practiced in Asia. They stand in a way that depicts the shape of the original Hebrew letters. And samurai had to be removed as the main feature of Japan and converted to a monarchy system with a level of importance given to different tasks and the military being relegated to a minor role basically were like uh, air in a bubble. It just kind of grew within itself until it blew open and then tried to take over the world type of thing. The U.S., who had participated with Portuguese Jesuits to change the samurai culture to a monarchy and eventually a democracy for the brunt of the original attack, which was on Pearl Harbor. The women that are women today are known always for wearing pearls. Anyway, we're dealing with a subject that that has a never-ending <laughs> aspect to it. So, yeah. not going to get all of the answers on the same day, right. if ever, because time is short. But we're all going to the same place. Some of us will exit through the door that takes us to the fifth dimension, and that's the only, quote-unquote, heaven there is. And we use the word heaven because we can't use any other word because when really there are no other words to explain. Remember that uh, Yale University is in New Haven, Connecticut. Yes. New heaven is what they think being made over again as a slave is the best there is. <laughs> They're wrong. That sounds yeah. more like hell. Yeah. Than I think <laughs> it is more like hell. <laughs> Just to be born over and over again as a better slave doesn't <laughs> sound like anything that would be appealing to anybody who'd understand what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it's past my bedtime. 